Hello BSC 6003 students, Dr. Conway here for lesson 10 on funding energy efficiency management within the organization. Uh, this is our last uh, video lecture for the term. Um, of course you're, you're cleaning up your business plans uh, now as we speak I hope and uh, things are moving towards uh, the final exam and completion of the term and hopefully graduation for all of you. All right. Uh, don't forget to do the quiz, quiz four for this week, which I'll be sending out uh, uh, on Monday today um, so that you can do it uh, tomorrow, all right? No Zoom call tomorrow, um, uh, so the next Zoom call will be on the 4th, all right? So uh, keep going on your business plan, keep going, push, push through to the end of the term, and uh, keep positive throughout it all, okay? So let's talk a little bit about this. The slides in this in this lesson are um, quite comprehensive, so I won't spend a lot of time on the detail, but I do want to hit on some key points um, uh, with with respect to this. Um, I, and I'm going to approach the finance discussion from the perspective of barriers to financing, okay? So that you can see um, uh, the things that have to be done and done well to be able to understand how to finance. Uh, your business case or your energy efficiency program within an organization. Okay, and, and, and in, this serves as kind of a review of the non-cost benefit aspects of the course as well, uh, this, this particular lesson, all right? We do know that, that, um, that, as we said very early in the term, that energy managers are competing uh, with, with other proposals for scarce resources within an organization and so that right away sets the context within what your business case must survive but also the financing of your business case must survive that that threshold of comparison with other projects within the organization with it with respect to how well they advance the organization's principal objectives and we already learned a lot about linking your business case to organizational objectives because Without that, financing becomes much less likely uh, for your business case, all right? Now, one of the other uh, things that we've touched on is, is getting senior management support for any business case. Otherwise, there's not gonna be a basis for internal financing or sign-offs to go to external financing for any business case. And that's why I recommend when you start a business case initiative, you, you assemble an energy management team and that energy management team has representation from key designated decision makers within the organization. And before you advance your business case uh, too far, you get an opportunity to present that to, to a member of the board or to a senior management person who will represent the initiative to the board to get sign off that this is a legitimate exercise where we expect this exercise of the business case to result in some action. Okay, you can do business cases until you're blue in the face. If you don't have the buy-in that the intent of this business case is to result in meaningful action, you're, you're very un, you're very, uh, it's very unlikely that you're gonna get approval for your business case or that you'll ever get financing for your business case. So building that team concept is a critically important consideration uh, that will buy support for the board of directors. Now, don't just get support from a, man a mid-level manager who says, yeah, 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 go ahead. You want to make sure that you have support higher up in the organization and that this kind of an initiative is on uh, the agenda of an appropriate level of decision making within the organization. If it's a major initiative, then it needs to be part of the major initiative that's being advanced by the board. If it's still a significant initiative, but with, it's within the mandate of a vice president or a president to adopt it, then that's the level you need to influence, okay? That's the level where you need to get the support to move forward with the initiative. Without it, you've got yourself a big problem, okay? Um, you know, business cases often show, fall short because they are led by energy managers who think in terms of energy speak as well, right? We learned about that, right? That we, we, you know, you can't, you can be technically adept, you can be a very knowledgeable energy management person, but if you cannot finesse the, the management challenges, the awareness raising, the transparency, the getting a team to buy into the initiative, 
right? And to speak in a language that managers can understand or they're accustomed to understanding, which is issues of, of uh, operating costs, issues of brand, issues of marketing, issues of linking to organizational objectives. All of those things uh, are criti- that would define a, an energy manager who's eventually one day going to be a part of the management team from those who will stay technical people. I'll be quite honest with you, okay? That's the distinction. Whenever I ran international energy projects, hiring technical energy management people was easy. It was, there, there were dozens of them that I could choose from, all right? And, you know, identifying the person that could go and sell the whole energy conversion project or the energy management project because they understood these dynamics and this, these elements of selling something, selling a business case. Um, you know, uh, you, you needed those those absolutely critical people. All right. And the other another key uh, consideration in getting financing is is you know you, you need to have the energy manager has to have the financial education to know how to speak to people in the language of finance, know how to speak to to energy management as a viable contributor to the organizational objectives, both financially. Uh, brand, marketing, and so on, as I said, okay? And so one of the major weaknesses that the industry has, and to, the, to this day, they still have, even though it's not as bad as it used to be, is that we had energy managers without any business case or financial management or training at all, okay? You're getting a small dose of it, one term and a two-hour-per-week course, uh, but if you want to become a, a manager in this field or you want to work for a major energy management company selling to large clients like the Algonquin Colleges of the World or, or major facilities or institutions, then, then, then having that, that financial education and training for an energy manager is critically important. You're getting a dose of it in this course. Do I expect you at the back end to be absolute experts in cost-benefit analysis for business cases? No. This is just your first run, all right? But it shows you the direction that you need to go in to develop sophisticated expertise that will enable you uh, to become more employable and to rise up within an organization, all right? Uh, another key issue, uh, as we've discussed in the course, is that if you want to get financing, whether that be third-party financing, internal financing, whatever the case may be, you know, trust in verification schemes is absolutely critical. That question I've raised with you a number of times before, how will we know whether th- these investments you're asking us to make into this business case will pay off? How will we know? So your verification schemes have your metrics for verifying the performance of your business case or your energy management program have to be very clear, have to be understandable to people who are not technical experts in energy, and they have to be tracked consistently and reported on consistently. That's how you build trust within an organization, all right? Even if these people seem disinterested and managers and other units seem disinterested, you put together a one-page or two-page report or fact sheet showing here's how we've improved our performance on energy. Here's, you know, how we've re- reduced, you know, um, operational time losses because of energy problems or whatever whatever the objective of the business case was, you report out on that, all right? Because if you build that trust that, hey, you know, I mean, it's exactly what uh, Jane said or Bob said, you know, that they are delivering the results. We are saving money. Our performance is more reliable. You know, we are able to market, you know, uh, a green message to our stakeholders or our customers. Whatever the metrics were in your business case, make sure you report out on those metrics, okay? And make sure you're constantly monitoring those metrics. Don't forget about them. Monitor them. Report out on them, whether that be quarterly or, or twice annually or, you know, something like that. Report out on them. Make sure the management team sees these results, all right? Because that's how you you will understand uh, you know how to go forward. Okay. Another issue that I've, I flagged last uh, video lecture was the issue of, of cost accounting for energy efficiency projects. One of the major problems is, is that you know energy uh, efficiency investments often end up as capital expenditures, which show up as debt on the books. The problem with a lot of accounting systems is they're, you know, because they're not familiar with energy management, is that they do not track the benefit side the same way. 
they're buried in operating costs, okay? Even if the operating costs went down, there's no clear way of determining that that downward trend in operating costs can be attributed to energy savings that you've brought in through your energy management program. So one of the major barriers of this is, is working with an accounting department to say, yes, this is a capital expenditure. We're buying new boilers for all of our businesses. It's costing us $7 million. But don't just leave that as a capital expenditure on the book because it just simply looks like a debt where you don't have the payoff, right? It's like buying a car and never driving it or or you're driving it, but, but nobody knows you're driving it, okay? Nobody knows what benefits it's ascribing to you, are providing for you, all right? So, uh, you know, linking the, uh, these capital expenditures with operational performance clearly within a finance department is really critical. One of the things I would often do is I would, they, you know, it'd be strange. People give you weird looks. You know, can I, can I talk to your accounting department or your, your finance uh, director of finance? Well, why would you need to talk to him? You know, we told you we have the money. Uh, yes, I know. I know. You, you've said you have the money, but I would like to know how they're doing their cost accounting with respect to energy investments, because I, I want to know that, you know, if if I if I advise you to spend 17 million in doing this for energy, that somehow I'm not only tracking it in kilowatt hours or whatever and money, but the accounting department is reporting out that way, that the expenditures that were that while those expenditures went up, the operating costs relating to energy went down, all right? So you need to be able to uh, look at all of these different ways that organizations communicate key decision, key information to key decision makers that counts for energy, okay? That's a critically important consideration, right? Otherwise, it just looks like debt on the books. And the next time you go back for energy management, they, you, they kind of go, what, again? We're going to take on more debt in this. I mean, what did what you know? What did the debt the last time we took on for this account for? I mean, wh where's the evidence that we got anything out of that, right? And so reporting out on that and making sure it becomes county a part of the accounting infrastructure, so that when managers read the financial results and performance of the organization, they see the link between the energy expenditures and the energy results. All right. Uh, the other, another major barrier that you will encounter if you work in a large organization that maybe needs to do a major, a major uh, transformation in energy, but you know is worried about the cash outlay or worried about trying to finance it or something like that. So energy managers need to become aware of the workings of energy uh, performance contracts. Okay, let's for example, Al Algonquin College with Siemens, for example. All right. I mean, you know, uh, these energy performance contracts with energy management specialty companies, of which some of you may end up working with, I don't know. Um, you know, th this lack of understanding of how these things work can become a major barrier to change within an organization because one of the proposals you might make in a business case or an energy management performance uh, 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 program within the organization is, is you may come to the conclusion that the best way for our organization to handle this is to launch an EPC, an energy performance contract arrangement with a energy management company like ABB, Siemens, or, or smaller ones. Okay, but you're never gonna you're never gonna get there if you don't understand how these things work, and and you and you can't communicate that effectively within an organization. All right. Now these these big companies who do this kind of work, of course, they have their experts. They'll come in and sell and everything, but the company will typically also want to have an, their own energy manager in dialogue with this process and to be monitoring that person. Like Algonquin doesn't need a lot of energy managers around because they have an, an energy performance contract, but they have an energy manager, um, energy managers on staff to monitor how everything is going on behalf of the corporation. Same thing with government. You can walk through government departments, huge government departments, and you'll find maybe one or two energy managers because their job is actually just to work with EPCs, uh, you know, and so they're, they're acting on the behalf of the corporation to make sure that these contracts move uh, uh, smoothly. Okay, and one of the other things that, 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 you know, will be a barrier if you're working for a small or medium-sized organization, not so much the big guys, but 
a small and medium sized companies is just trust in the technology. But we've discussed this in our business cases, right? That we have a low hanging fruit, a middle of the pack and a large option because sometimes you, you're selling them the low hanging fruit option to begin to build trust. That, you know, hey, if we really do change this lighting, it does work. Hey, we have saved money. You know, it, it can seem very simple to an energy manager. Like, like duh. Yeah, obviously, but sometimes it just takes time to build trust and, and understanding of technology options within small and medium-sized enterprises. That's why Natural Resources Canada and organizations like that publish these things for these booklets and these guides for small business because, you know, these people need to be convinced that if I do this, it will be good, okay? It, it really does work, you know? This kind of thing uh, can often be an issue. And so even getting financing of the smallest items, if you don't have that understanding and trust, getting financing for even the smallest things can be seem like a mountain to overcome, right? And it shouldn't be like that. But that's why, like I say, organizations, uh, government organizations responsible for energy mandates publish these booklets, you know? What can small businesses do? And, and you know, this is what you can save even if you do low-hanging fruit option to encourage people to buy in to the entire agenda. I'm not going to go through these slides. You know these things, but they're there, okay? And then, you know, one of the other things that comes into financing is just having sophistication, knowing your options on how to finance initiatives. Because when you roll a business case forward, I'm not asking you to do that, right, in this case. But if you're working for a company, you know, you will not roll a business case forward without without giving some indication not not a specific recommendation that's for the finance guys but a a a sense as to possibilities for financing initiatives okay um you know and and some of them are quite should be well known to you guys okay the, in, at a minimum the, these options would include utility on bill financing sometimes you know utilities will finance initiatives for energy conservation right depending upon the jurisdiction and the program sometimes they'll make the investment or help you make the investment uh, in some cases for some aspects of energy management and you will pay back the the utility by adding the, re the recharge or the additional charge to your to your energy bills, right? So, you know, sometimes utility on bill financing will work for certain aspects where it's within the scope of the utility company to provide that, okay? They're not gonna, you know, and sometimes they have programs that go beyond that. Sometimes they have programs where they will actually finance light changes or, or finance air conditioning changes or whatever uh, with the assumption that they're trying to save power all right it's a government initiative or they're acting on climate change by mandate of the government or whatever and they will they will have programs where you your company can do it uh, but then you pay back the utility or the government or whoever's funding it through the utility uh, through uh, additions to your monthly or your energy bills okay and that's a, a really good uh, way of, of doing it and a lot of organizations and a lot of jurisdictions do that okay Third-party financing is an is obviously a big one, right? Usually, corporations will will uh, if they're going to do a major energy management initiative, uh, you know, won't like most small smart business people will tell you they're not going to use all their own money. Okay, they're going to finance anything that's that large. If it's small stuff, they they will operate. They will they will finance it through through um, um, uh, operating capital. Okay. Uh, you know, if small things. They're not going to go to a third-party financer for that, or they're not going to go to a stock stock issue or something like that for smaller. But the bigger the items get, then third-party financing enters into it, right? Or they're selling stocks on the stock market, and the and the stocks are going up, and they have the operating capital. But that's just a way of borrowing money as well, right? It's not a bank, but it is it is borrowing cash that has to be paid back when the stocks are sold. All right, so I mean, all of this stuff, third-party financing. So becoming aware of what's going on with third-party financing is is also a very important consideration. Well, what what do the banks look for? I'm the energy manager. What do the bank? What are the banks going to look for? What evidence are they going to require? How are they going to be convinced? What have I? What am I hearing from other energy managers and other companies that successfully finance large energy management programs? You have to learn. You have to follow. 
what's going on with this. And sometimes governments will work with the banks, right, to, to finance these things. Like the government of Canada, major climate change mitigation initiative, you know, they might start looking more preferentially or they might backstop loans for energy management. These things will all emerge if we're going to come to grips with climate change. So tracking these things uh, becomes critically important, okay? Um, you know, and local improvement charge programs, are, you know, those are the types of things like, you know, it's like the first category, but, but there's ways of, of, of doing finance, you know, finance through, through um, would, you know, they would, fi owners would finance their retrofits through municipality and repay the loan through their property tax bill. Sometimes municipalities will do that. Sometimes if a municipality wants to encourage everybody along a street to to uh, improve their uh, their lighting or to improve their uh, whatever the case may be that the city or a local government might want to do and uh, and the, and will add value to a business the, the the business the municipality may fund that or they might get money from say the provincial governments or federal governments to do uh, climate change mitigation initiatives within their municipality and so the municipality may set up a program which says that you know we if you go and buy if you have a boiler that's older than such and such a date and you go and buy a new one we will help you out we will help you pay for that but we will then get that back from you on property taxes or business surcharge taxes or something like that to phase it out over time. And these may be low interest loans or they may be any number of things. So what I'm saying is, is that there are all kinds of different programs for financing initiatives that as you become more experienced, you will learn instinctually and you will learn as a matter of business to, to, to understand these things, know what's going on because there are numerous programs. Even today in Canada, you look around, there are numerous programs of a different type in various jurisdictions to help fund energy efficiency, all right? Um, then finally, in which relates to a topic we discussed earlier is ESCOs, right? Uh, financing through energy service companies, where they, you know, you, where your institution signs a contract with, an es with a, a Siemens or an ABB or whatever, uh, and it's Siemens and ABB that pay all the upfront costs. They put the boilers in, they change the lights, they put in the whatever, whatever is going to be done. And what you do is you pay, and they, they're required to meet a certain energy performance threshold for your company or your institution, right? They, they are on the hook for that. They must deliver the energy performance. But in return, when you pay your bills, you know, you're paying them back for their initial capital. So what you get as an institution is this much a month you have to pay. Okay, and buried in that is what it's costing you for the energy, but also what it's costing you for any uh, capital expenditures they made as part of their contract. Okay, and then that's paid out over time. Okay, uh, federal building initiatives use ESCO model to systematically upgrade buildings owned by the government of Canada and agencies, Algonquin College. Many government institutions use ESCOs, right? because the government then doesn't have to lay out the upfront cash to do things, to, to do on, uh, upgrades, but rather guarantees the company, the ESCO company, a certain amount of money, okay? I con contracted a certain amount of money per month or per however it's paid. And then within that, it's up to the ESCO to deliver that energy performance and they recoup from that money that's paid by the institution per month. It's up to them how they do it, all right? from the institution's point of view is we have cost certainty. This is what it costs us, period, all right? And then how the ESCO delivers that energy, how the ESCO delivers that performance is up to, and how much profit they can make from that is up to them. All I know is my institution pays this, all right? And that can be a very, very successful thing for a government institution to do because then they just budget it per year and that's it. They don't worry about it. The ESCO worries about whether this, in order to deliver that energy performance, we need to change the boilers in all these buildings or whatever. And they get their money back however they get their money back, all right? They're experts are doing that, okay? So uh, this is the kind of thing, these are all the types of options that, that are, are available when you're looking at financing, but, but I talk about it from the perspective of barriers, all right? So, you know, keep this stuff in mind. 
uh, keep keep in mind that you know this is one course, one business course you get in your program. As time goes by and you get into the field, if you get into the field and you stay in the field, these are the types of areas of education that you're going to want to explore if you want to rise up in the organization. As I tell people, all pe students that come into this course, there's all kinds of ways to live a life. If you want to be you know, a technical energy manager and that's you're happy with that job, no problem, okay? But if you ever want to rise up and in the organization, these are the types of skill sets you're going to need, all right? So we'll be talking to you next week on our Zoom call prior to your final exam. Uh, keep going on your business cases and don't forget to do your quiz for this week. Okay, gang? Take care for now. Bye-bye.